There is a fundamental human right that one billion people on this earth still don't have. And every year, another hundred million are driven into poverty just paying for it. I'm talking about access to healthcare. And it's not just a third world problem. You can feel its effects all around us. There are still 25 million uninsured Americans. And in our country, where we pride ourselves on universal health care, the number two leading cause of personal bankruptcy is unpaid medical bills. How does that make any sense? When I went into medicine, I wanted to help solve this problem. It was very important to me to solve this problem. But I realized that I was part of the problem, that in some ways I was part of the machinery that was causing this problem. So I'm going to tell you a story about how I realized, I came to this conclusion, how we can solve this problem. It started in Port-au-Prince, Haiti in October 2010, right after the earthquake that rocked this island nation. 250,000 died instantly. One million more instantly homeless. Many more will die and are still dying, in fact, because of lack of access to medical care. It is truly an apocalypse. I'm here volunteering in a hospital run by Project Medishare. Although it's tiny by our standards, it was making massive contributions as Haiti's only functioning trauma hospital at the time. The problem with being the only place in the block, though, is you had to get to the hospital and you had to knock on that door. And it was in that kind of neighborhood that it was manned by an armed security guard and a triage nurse. And you never know what you may find behind that door. In this case, it was a flatbed truck full of victims from a nearby car accident. And it was at that moment I realized that's why I was part of the problem. I was perched in my ivory tower that was a hospital, having people come to me. These people already had so many obstacles that made getting care difficult. But making them come to me, it just made, made getting care that much harder. In fact, impossible for some. And we were fundamentally in the same predicament right here at home. Living in North America and getting the care you need here is also like an obstacle course. You still ultimately need to go to see a doctor. And that involves waiting on the phone to make your appointment, then waiting to get time off work, then waiting in Toronto's traffic mageddon. I'm sure none of you have ever seen this before. <laughs> then waiting in that packed waiting room because, and there's all these coughing patients around you because a doctor like me is really behind. I know this because I'm always behind. And then our little trick, we move you to an exam room where we think that maybe it'll take the heat off. <laughs> You're onto the trick. <laughs> and then I tell you to go get some blood tests or some imaging, so you have to go wait there. And then you have to come back to the same packed waiting room with all the coughing patients to wait for me to discuss those results, and it's not over yet. You still have to wait for your prescription. And then, if it's not enough, you have to wait for that bill or you have to wait for that battle you're about to wage with your insurance provider for some of the steps that weren't reimbursed unbeknownst to you. Have you all experienced this before? Yeah, I thought so. <laughs> Look, I get it. I may be a doctor, but I'm a patient too. I'm often caught swimming upstream trying to get the care that I need. <laughs> like, just a few months ago, I was in the ER, and my wife's in the crowd. She will tell you I was a total peach when I was told I'd have to wait six months to see my specialist. And, and the crazy part was, I was standing next to a guy who was keeled over with abdominal pain, and uh, the nurse came along and said, you're going to have to wait another four hours. Um, I shouldn't be laughing, but it, it was just a, a comical scene, and I, if he's watching, I really, I do feel your pain, and trust me. Um, we simply live in an imperfect healthcare system, and it's in desperate need of an overhaul. But what if you had a dog? a digital doctor in the palm of your hand. Imagine the power of getting the medical advice you need when you need it. And I'm not talking about how many steps you take, I'm talking about real advice. What if all of our elderly and chronically ill could be kept at home with technology that allowed them to age gracefully at home instead of in an institution or in a long-term care facility? Not surprisingly, we're not the only ones that have imagined what the future of medicine could look like. Many of you may remember Dr. McCoy, from the hit TV show Star Trek. He would use a handheld device called a tricorder to make many diagnoses from the palm of his hand. The concept was 50 years ahead of its time. Well, thanks to the XPRIZE Foundation, that future could be here, now. And XPRIZE is a global competition to inspire independent teams to turn science fiction into reality. If many of you know may know the XPRIZE, and if you don't, the first XPRIZE spurred on private human spaceflight. Now, thanks to SpaceX and many other companies, we have a multi-billion dollar private space industry. 
with the Qualcomm TriColor X Prize, they imagined a future where we had a seamless device that could monitor all your vital signs continuously to the cloud where it could be mined. And on top of that, it could help you autonomously diagnose a number of different conditions. And on top of that, it would give you advice on what to do next. Luckily for me, I was asked to lead a Canadian team to vie for an X Prize. Uh, we started in earnest in October of 2014, so a few years ago, and we had nine months to deliver 30 functioning tricorders. You can imagine how insane that was. <laughs> um, we, went, we went from 330 companies down to six, and fortunately for us, we are the only Canadians left in the competition. Well, today, I'm going to demonstrate our tricorder for you. I'd like to introduce you to Vitality, a virtual digital doctor engineered by CloudDX. It's powered by an artificial intelligence, and it's designed to help you escape the waiting game. So I'd like to start by introducing Robert Call, my co-founder and the CEO and president of CloudDX. Just as a sidebar, he normally does not dress like Steve Jobs. He's not a maniacal wannabe. <laughs> it just made the equipment easier. <laughs> uh, so, we've all seen what a hospital bed looks like. Your loved one tethered to the bed, monitors hooked up to them. In fact, some of these monitors and wires make them feel even more miserable, so we're not doing our job. But how do we untether Rob from these monitors? And just for perspective, this equipment costs upwards of $50,000 just for some of the monitoring equipment. The bed is $100,000, $150,000. <laughs> so as you can see, he's putting on our wearable. We paid homage to the original tri uh, tricorder by having three components to our device. A wearable that he puts around his neck that monitors all of his vital signs. And additionally, and there are Rob's vital signs. It is utilizing multiple sensors to calculate a number of variables that we need in the hospital. A heart rate, temperature, breathing rate, continuous blood oxygen levels, the electrical rhythm of his heart, and on top of that, continuous blood pressure. This level of physiological monitoring is unprecedented outside of an ICU. Sonny, the blood pressure looks a little elevated. <laughs> What's going on? Uh, Rob, you're doing a TEDx talk. <laughs> <laughs> but seriously though, um, doctors have never been faced or bombarded with this m amount of data. We don't even know what to think about this amount of data. But what is important is that the vitality system is non-invasive. To get continuous blood pressure in an ICU requires that you insert a catheter inside an artery. So what can vitality do? So say Rob is feeling a bit unwell. Say his ears hurt and he has a fever. Vitaly will prompt him through a number of steps without a doctor there, without anybody with any level of healthcare sophistication to self-diagnose his problem. You can see he's holding the spirotoscope device. It's in his hand. It's now going to pair with the smartphone. It's detected, yeah, we're good to go. Rob is now going to use this device to image his inner ear. So you can see it's it's getting a good picture of his inner ear, there's no doctor there, and now we'll compare that image to stock images, and as we evolve, we'll be using automated image recognition to help diagnose this without his human eye. And voila, Rob's ear is normal. <laughs> <laughs> Vitality. <laughs> Vitality will now teach Rob what to do next if he did have the condition and give him some meaningful, actionable advice. But now we're going about to show you the most powerful tool. Uh, this, this is amazing. Now imagine you're at TEDx, you have a cough, you have a fever, you're in Toronto, just to provide some perspective. We all know that there was an epidemic, a respiratory epidemic in Toronto a little while ago. Um, so Rob is now being prompted 
to do a cough test. You ready? <coughs> We're now analyzing this data. The information is going to a cloud where our algorithms and servers are processing this cloud, and lo and behold, he has a healthy cough. He falls into the control group. None of the other diagnoses are identified. <laughs> The fact of the matter is, the ability to detect respiratory diseases with a simple app on your phone is real. It works, and we are striving to make it better every day. By next year, this incredible tool will be just a download away for over a billion people on this earth. It's only the first of our tricorder innovations that we plan to improve and validate and bring to your home. And that is how we fundamentally want to change and transform how healthcare is delivered, not only in North America, but around the globe. Thank you.